Hey moviegoers, I'm Caitlin Becker from Who Say here with the amazingly talented Kristen Bell talking about chips. What are you wearing? Oh, it's my um it's my uniform. Aren't you supposed to change out of it after you get off work? You know, it was my first day, so I thought you'd probably wanna see what I look like. In all brown? I love that your character in the film has to kind of mirror your real life. You play Dak Shepard's wife. Yes. But I imagine you do not have the same relationship with your husband off camera that you did on camera. I don't have the kind of resentment for Dax that Karen has for John. That was actually his hesitation in casting me. He, he said, yes, you can be in the movie, and then he kind of got hesitant, and he was like, I'm just worried that audience members, even subconsciously, would want to see us as a couple, and I can't have that because you need to be so nasty to me. But thankfully, I convinced him that I could, in fact, make his life miserable, as Karen does John, and uh, solidified the part. You have to be, Karen has to be a bit of a jerk to John throughout the movie, and I have to imagine it was kind of fun to play, because you don't mean it, and... Oh, it's so fun. How much fun is that to sort of play around with someone you love that much, it's and sort of so just fun. needle him? Yeah, it's just, like, it's like playing, it's like watching when our kids play house or something, but you take on an entirely different persona, and you get to actually be really nasty to your real life husband and we did you know after the takes I laughed a lot and hugged him and kissed him a lot because I felt a little bit bad because I just had to look at him with such disgust but it was fun you know I took like all the times over the last 10 years that he's annoyed me and pulled because they exist and, and I'm married I get it yes and then pulled them into one where I was just like a volcano of just disgust for him <laughs> A volcano of disgust. I kind of like that mental image. That's that, who that, Karen is. That She's that a sort volcano of, of disgust. Would Karen go to the bad place or the good place? Oh, the oh my God, Karen would have a leading role in the bad place. <laughs> oh. Karen is so childish and vapid, and you know, I mean, of course, like. Playing her, you have to recognize it all comes from her insecurities, but she's a mean girl in high school that never grew up, that thinks that being a trophy wife is the, the epitome of success. Now, on top of actually playing opposite of Dax, he was the director of the film, so how was it actually working under his direction? I love, love working for my husband. I love it, because I trust him. So not only do I know that he's going to write to my strengths, you know, um, he also when he gives me direction, I know he wants to make his movie look good, but I also know he wants to make me look good. Like, he's my safety net. So even, you know, when he comes in and goes, oh, don't do that, that's not working. I, there's no ego involved when he says it. There's no ego when I receive it. I'm like, great, tell me how I can make this good for both of us. He's, he, you know, he's on my team. The movie is so funny. I watched it and was full on laugh out loud. I know, kind it's of like really funny, curling right? over in my seat, hysterically laughing. But you guys are funny. I mean, that's just who you guys are as actors and as people. You're hysterical. But there's something specific about the way that he writes because he often transfers conversations that he has with his buddies that nobody should hear, <laughs> that are very not PC and very taboo, just happening in our living room. He'll just write that into a movie. But he's the kind of writer that he writes the conversations you have with your friends after your parents go to sleep. You know, after when you close the door and you're like, don't tell them I said this, but. And he writes a lot of taboo, hard to discuss subjects because he likes exploring those things. And he likes, you know, hearing each person's point of view. So he talk, you know, there's like, he talks about sexism, he talks about homophobia, but he talks about them so that the conversation can have a spark because the, if you don't talk about things and you don't explore them, they just sort of like sit and fester. But he really, um, he loves talking about taboo subjects. No, none more taboo than the lazy boy. Oh, yeah, this lazy boy, which is still there. I can't deny it's a comfortable chair. That's where I'll start. I mean, I run the house, right? There's no As doubt about should. that. But I'm not a tyrant. I want to take into consideration his needs as well. I bought the I bought the damn thing, you know, for his office. But then after Chips, it came home. I didn't realize it was going to live in my living room. But it's an intensely comfortable chair, so I'm having second thoughts. Wow. I know. That's, that's a big step. Kristen, thank you so much. <laughs>